And welcome to your Raider show. Is it still their Raider show? On our TV. <laughs> I tell you what, we don't have enough time for me to even get off of my chest. Mm. And do I, do I still love my Raiders? You still Absolutely. do. I mean, I'm Raider through my, you, know, you cut me to silver and black blood comes That's out of right. me. But I, I, I just, I, even driving in, when, when I text you, remember yesterday, what time and all, I, I can't get it out of my system. I mean, and, and this very rarely happens to me because I move on, right? Right. But I don't understand. And I know you the same way because less than them told me about you playing ball. <laughs> I mean, they have. I was actually talking to him this morning. Mm -hmm. But my point is, how can you not be up to the utmost of your ability, mentally, physically, everything, when you play a game as important as that game was on Sunday against Kansas City in Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri? Are you kidding me? I mean, honestly, I tape, I watched the first quarter and maybe four or five minutes of the second, right? And I had to go, I had something planned, I had to go. Mm -hmm. And I taped it. I got home, I couldn't watch it. I heard a lot of on the radio going, but I could not sit there because I was so, and you said you was disappointed, not angry. No, yeah. I was angry, disappointed, pissed off, any kind of way you want, any, any kind of <laughs> narrative you want to say. And I just couldn't get myself to go back and watch what I heard a lot on the radio after watching the little bit I did and not see the effort. I, I just can't get that. The offensive ineptitude, that's what I'm going to call it. The offensive ineptitude. For the life of me, I never would have thought that Derek Carr, with the chance to erase his demons of not being able to come through at Arrowhead Stadium, that he would go out there and perform the way that him and the rest of the Oakland Raiders offense did. Yeah. The offensive line wasn't giving him time. He was too statuesque in the pocket. He had ability to run. He's not seeing the players not down happen. the field. Yep. The players coming up at the beginning of the game, dropping passes, Crabtree twice. It's like, what is going on here? You practice every day. You know, Crabtree's game check is $367,000 a game. And I'm not putting it on him. He did lead us with seven receptions. But I'm saying as a unit, I believe that the, the Raiders have went back and they're reversed. And what they're doing is I think that they're not confident in this system that they're in right now. I think it was too much change, variation. It's like, okay, now you're bringing in an offensive coordinator. Now you're trying to work the bugs out. Cars coming off of an injury. I just feel like that it was a huge disappointment. So I didn't get angry. A lot of times when the Raiders lose, you know, I'm so into the game, I have to go to sleep, right? So I could just sleep it off. I didn't go to sleep. I just said, okay, well, whatever. Well, if that's how they're going to represent, you know, and we are rabid Raider fans, we're expecting to see our team grasp hold of the opportunity to represent the AFC West, to be the division champions, it was right there all for the taking. And we let it get away. But the thing that bothered me the most is that we didn't even show up. We didn't even show up. Mentally or physically? Mentally or physically. Um, I mean, there were some players that stood out that played well. You know, Marshawn is still running hard. He's cutting back when they give an opportunity. But Marshawn only had six carries for 71 yards and a couple signature beast mode runs. But what happened? We got behind and we went away from it. I don't think that we should have got away from the run. I think we should have kept trying to pound it and pound it until Carr was able to settle down and complete some passes. Well... The thing that bothered me, let's go back to the beginning. First play from scrimmage for Oakland. First play of the game for mm -hmm. Oakland. They get a pushback on their line. I'm Carr. Here comes the line. He'd never move. Right. Statuesque. And it caused a sack. How do you get a sack when you're not touched? Right. Think about that. No one on Kansas, they, they gave it to the closest guy to him that pushed the lineman back. But how do you get a sack and you don't even physically touch the man? Well, that, number one, the line collapsed. What are the people doing that close? I what are get the players that close to him? I for? get that. I totally agree with you 100 and 1,000%. Uh, 1, I don't disagree with that. But I'm the franchise player of this team. 
and I can't see the line of men six, four, six, five, 300 some pounds coming back on me. And I'm just going to stand there, get bumped to the ground from my own behind offensive lineman. And you go down like a sack of potatoes. I mean, yeah, I think that, that play there signified the whole game for me. I think Carr has in his mind before the snap who he wants to go to. And he's looking them off, but all the time thinking that, yeah, I'm going to come back to him. That's who I want to go to before the play. And he's going back there. He's being too mechanical. You know how you could be Perfect when you play word. in a game and you're being yep. too mechanical because that's just going through the sequence of what you're trying to do. You're trying to look them off. You pump fake it, and you're going to come back there anyway because in your mind you're thinking that's the matchup that you want. So I think he's telegraphing, you know, where he's going with the ball. And I don't think he's seeing the field as well as he did last year. And I'm hearing a lot of people, a lot of analysis say that Carr has regressed. And for the first time, John, and you know me, mm -hmm. I've been all over. That's my boy. I'm glad we got a franchise quarterback. But for the first time watching the game, I was looking. I turned to my son. I said, Carr don't seem right. It's like he's not seeing. I mean, He's going down the field in the triple coverage, but yet in the middle of the field, you got Jared, Coop, uh, Jared Cook wide open. So you're not seeing the field completely. And I think that he's scanning the field, but he's not seeing the field. So I think he needs to quit being mechanical, and he actually needs to see the field and just kind of relax. I think a lot of it has to do, too, with his undesire to get hit because yeah. he's injured. So he's thinking about it, and he's not just letting it rip. Well... I call it a different word. I know Matthew about to give us the time frame in a minute, but I call it scared. I don't think Carr has punk in his draws. No, 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 I no, really no, no, don't. No, no. Not no, at no, all. No, no, no. no I, but I do think that I do think that the Raiders are out of sync. They're not. In, they're not okay. the same team we had last but year. When you tell me that, and we we got to get out of here in sixty seconds. But when you tell me that we have seen him, and I'm not saying he's a running quarterback. But I've seen him scamper to the side in the Kansas City game that they won. He's not even close to that. I think he's scared well, I of, think of getting hurt. I think that that has something to do with it. But more importantly, I don't think he's physically 100%. Because in that game, you're right, Carr had jets. He used to could run. But he's not trying now because he don't want to be hit. Right. And he knows that if he you couldn't remember what better. happened you last before be we go to our sponsors. Remember what happened last year when he went down, the season went down. And I think that's in his mind. He don't want to see that happen to the Raiders. again. But we're going down anyway with the way he's playing. <laughs> we are going Take down and we're going out right now to visit with our sponsors. We'll be right back with more of your Raiders show here on our TV. Come check us out at KJ's Barber and Hair Creations located 22126 Mission Boulevard in Hayward, California. We specialize in fades, tapers, dreads, weave coloring, and more. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Sundays by appointment zone. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at KJ's Barbershop. For more information, contact us at 510-690-9610. So come on down to KJ's Barber and Hair Creations. Social Light Jewelry and Accessories is a fashion-forward accessory company. We offer everything from stylish frames to fabulous necklaces. Come check us out at our showroom in Berkeley. The address is 2703 7th Street, Suite 221 in the city of Berkeley. We also have a website, www.socialitej&a. Come out and shop for all of your fabulous needs. Welcome back to your Raider show on RTV and we just had a segment while we were waiting to come back to you but you know it's easy to point the finger after watching something and being Raider fans as we are you know because I'll be honest with you I couldn't do a 49er show <laughs> or a Raider or, 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 or Cowboy show or I couldn't do that right because my heart's in this because of, I've been a Raider fan for so long. But my point is, is that these guys, and, and I don't know who it takes. I, I, I mean, I don't know what a, a boisterous guy that um, Khalil Mack is. I don't know if he's that holler guy. He's, that, he's not the one. Okay. Khalil I, leads by example. Right. The holler guy that we want to be able to infuse is Bruce Irvin. And I, that's where I was leading because as I watched the game, this is early on, he had two sacks. Mm -hmm. 
And, and well, I thought thing, he had three, but yeah. No, he had two early before mm -hmm. I left. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is somebody has to take the initiative to, to, to speak up to the team as to our sense of urgency. They lose Saturday, Sunday is over. They're, they're done. So they, they have to hope Excuse and pray me. that they mm -hmm. go nine mm -hmm. and seven. And when we met a week ago, we talked about, I said it. You said they could run the table. I said the only, only one I'm worried about is Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. because, and they got to play at Philly. Right. But now that Carson Wentz is out, that's a winnable game. Very much a winnable game. So they, in order for them, I mean, hopefully we'll come back next week and say we still got a shot. But if they lose to the Cowboys on Sunday, it's a wrap. It's well, a the Raiders still have three possibilities to get into the playoffs. Number one, they need Buffalo and they need Baltimore to lose two out of three. Now, Buffalo, they have to play the Dolphins twice and the Patriots. So but, Buffalo but, has a chance to lose two out of three. But see, we're not talking about that at this point. Because well, they're not, I'm, I'm just telling you my opinion, mm -hmm. they're not going to get in as a wild card. I hadn't got to that scenario yet. There's three scenarios. That's number one. Okay. And the Titans have to lose as well. The other scenario is, is that if Kansas City loses two games and San Diego loses two games and the Raiders win out, then the Raiders can win the division still. Right. So it's still not unclear as to the Raiders being, as we call it, mathematically out of it. They still have an opportunity to salvage the season, but they have to win out for any of the scenarios to play. They also need uh, Tennessee to lose a game, too. So the Titans, um, I believe the Titans have to go up against... Um, well, explain that to me. I, that's, that's why I mm -hmm. interrupted you before, apologize, but mm -hmm. when you mentioned the Titans, the, it, it, does, it, 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 can't, it won't come down to that because we will not get in as wild card. No, we no, I like to, get to see in. us st be strong at 9 and 7. Yeah, and well, then let and the that's great. Where they may. But, but, but what my point is, all the teams, every, everybody that's a divisional winner, mm -hmm. they will have better than that record. So we have to get if we're six and if we're eight and eight, we have to get in as as a. But the, the other wild cards haven't clinched yet, so basically we're still within reach and not mathematically out of a wild card if Buffalo and Baltimore loses twice and Tennessee loses once, and like I said, Buffalo is going to be up against Miami twice. And Miami had a great performance upsetting the Patriots last night and the Patriots. So they've, they've, they, there's a good possibility that facing Miami on the road and facing the Patriots at home, they could lose two out of three. Baltimore, on the other hand, they have a, a softer slate. Um, I'm hoping that um, Cleveland <laughs> can be able to give them a run for it and beat them. And then they also have to play against the Colts and they play against the 49ers. No, the Titans. Titans play against the 49ers. Right. So the 49ers can actually do the Raiders a favor if the 49ers beat the Titans, if it comes down to the wild card scenario. And the reason why I don't count the wild card scenario out is because, as you know, we were the first team ever to be a wild card and win the Super, Super Bowl. Bowl. Yep. So I'm still not going to cancel out that opportunity until they use that word mathematically. I always think that we have a chance. That's just the fighter in me to not give up, right? And I hope the Raiders feel the same way and don't give up because it's easy now with it being such a downer because I know that was a lonely flight. A long flight it coming from been. Kansas City. It should have been. 26 to nothing? Come on now. So it's like I just feel as if they just, they disappointed themselves. And, you know, Derek Carr, as usual, post-game presser, oh, blame it all on me. Don't blame it on a single player. Don't blame it on a single coach. But see, well, I get tired of that. You can't really do that. And like you said, it's like, yeah, I understand you're the leader and you're putting everything on your shoulders. But, you know, it's, it's about execution. That's why I don't put it all on Downing. You know, Del Rio came out and said that, you know, Downing will remain the offensive coordinator for the rest of the season. I think he should. Six and, nine and seven is transition. So say we do go nine and seven. It's his first year. Well, they need to gel all over. But I do think it was a mistake to remove Bill Musgrave last year when we were 12 and four. If it ain't broke, why fix it? I mean, we were 12 and three under Carr until Carr got hurt. So I think we should have kept the chemistry there between Musgrave. I think that that would have at least had more of a guidance as in terms of giving Carr, maybe that might be the issue, giving Carr this much latitude in the offense under Downing, whereas clearly yeah. Musgrave had a little bit more discipline and direction over how the offense would flow last year. You're right. Yep. But again, you know, we're, we're at a point now where 
the way that the season is going, and that's why, I, you know, I mean, I, I understand you using different scenarios, but I don't think there's a chance in hell that they can make the wild card. I just don't. Because mm -hmm. too many, you said, if this team, if the only way they can make the wild card is to win out and hope that. The, Buffalo and Baltimore lose twice and the Titans no, lose no, once. No, but see, you, That's you, it. I just made it simple for people. No, I'm, not, I, you, I'm getting back to the division championship mm -hmm. to win our division. Because mm -hmm. a wild card ain't going to happen. Because all these, if this team, I don't like that. I like if we win our games, <laughs> and that means that we got to beat San Diego. So we finish in a tie with Denver, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, uh, Kansas City, because we both beat each other. Mm -hmm. And it'll be the same way with San Diego. Okay, let me give you some division scenarios. How about that for us to win the division? Right. Okay, so for the Raiders to win the division, what, you, what we want is we want Kansas City to beat San Diego. We want Kansas City to beat San Diego, and we want Kansas City to lose the last two games to Miami and Denver. And they play Denver and Denver. So we want Kansas City to do that. Now, if San Diego uh, loses to Kansas City, then basically we want them, we want to be able to beat them. And that'll have, knock them out. And that'll knock them out. Because we'll have the same record provided we win two, and they win one. So that, that's the scenario for us to win the division. We do want Kansas City to beat San Diego. The other way is if San Diego does beat Kansas City, then San Diego has to lose their last two games. One being against us, right? So those are the well, only we, two scenarios. We have to win out. So I mean, we, we have to win out. Yeah. We, we blew a golden opportunity. We would have been in first place uh, for the whole division with just beating San Diego or tying San Diego. That would have been Yeah, it. we would have clinched it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and go back and visit our sponsors again, and we'll be right back with more of your Raiders show here on our TV. Visit Lena's Soul Food, a down-home, southern-style soul food restaurant where every meal is served and prepared with love. Whether you choose to dine in with us, reserve one of our private rooms, or perhaps you desire our catering, Lena's Soul Food is located in the wonderful city of Oakland at 6403 Foothill Boulevard. Our business hours are 11 a.m. to 9 p.m. and closed on Tuesdays. Give us a call at 510-957-5663. Lena's Soul Food, where memories and southern-style meals are made. My name is Jameer Dixon and I'm a locating Mark Fieldman for PG&E. Most people in the community recognize the blue trucks as PG&E. My truck is something new. It's an A11 truck. When you call A11, I come out to your house and I mark out our gas lines and our electric lines to make sure that you don't hit them when you're digging. A11 is a free service. I'm passionate about it because every time I go on the street, I think about my own kids. They're the reason that I want to protect our community and our environment. And if me driving that truck means that somebody gets to go home safer, then I'll drive it every day of the week. Together, we're building a better... LaKay Body Essentials. Pamper yourself with our whipped body butter. Our natural, luxurious body butter main ingredient is shea butter. Our body butter, body oils, and lotions will definitely increase healthier looking and smoother skin. We provide an overall relaxation experience from bath teas and soy candles. You can check us out on Facebook or Instagram at... LeKay Body Essentials. That's L E K Body Essentials. Come check us out at KJ's Barber and Hair Creations, located at 22126 Mission Boulevard in Hayward, California. We specialize in fades, tapers, dreads, weave coloring, and more. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sundays by appointment zone. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at KJ's Barbershop. For more information, contact us at 510 690-9610. So come on down to KJ Barber and Hair Creations. And welcome back to your Raiders show on RTV. And we're contemplating the future of the Raiders in terms of this particular season, 2017, 2018. So let's let's talk about you, you gave some scenarios about uh, you talked about a wild card already, but let's talk about being a division winner. What does it take for us to win a division? We have to win out. And we need to, uh, Kansas City needs to lose twice, and so does San Diego. That's simplifying it right there. We don't have a choice. We need to worry about winning our next game. And that's what we said before this game. But we need to focus now. We got to go ahead and get rid of this hangover from Kansas City and start looking towards coming home for our last uh, home-cooked meal of the season uh, and be ready for the Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott. We need to focus on how we're going to be able to hammer 
their running game and, and keep Alfred Morris? Because a lot of people say, okay, well, uh, they're missing, make, missing Ezekiel Elliott. Well, Alfred Morris is no tuna either. Right. So we need to be able to make sure that we stop the run and uh, we force Dak to not get comfortable in the pocket. And that's the one thing I can say is that our defensive line now, we're putting heat on the quarterback, and that's old Raider football. You saw in that first half of the game, Bruce Irvin's arguably had three sacks. They gave him credit for two. They gave one the one that arguably he was in on to Bowman, and then you also see Khalil Mack get a monster sack uh, towards the end of the half. So I feel like the Raiders' defensive line has awakened, and I think it's because Pajano has actually started blitzing more, and I think that that's giving quarterbacks a different look, and they're not so vanilla. And I think that we need to do the same thing on the other side of the ball. Stop being so vanilla and predictable. The play calling, we got to get more creative. We got a lot of playmakers, and it's all about getting the ball in playmakers' hands so that they can make plays. You can't make a play if you don't get the ball. So we needed to get Cordell Patterson in the game. He didn't hardly get any touches. Right? We didn't try to utilize Cooper before he got hurt. We wasn't throwing in his direction. You got to get these people the ball early. We didn't hardly even go to Jared Cook. And, of course, Marshawn Lynch was underutilized with only getting six carries. So what do we have to do to win? The keys to victory? We got to feed the beast at home. We got to give him the ball. That means that we got to pound it. Our offensive line is going to have to play better in the run game as well as in the pass game. Um, we need to hold on to the football, secure the football, because our receivers, man, we're leading the league in drops. So to me, the Raiders are just not mentally, mentally aligned. I think that you know they're they're okay physically. They're doing what they have to do, you know, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Even the secondary is playing better now. So. I don't blame this on the defense. I don't blame it on the offense. I blame it on the organization because we had too much things, too many good things going for us to be able to crumble the way we've crumbled. And this is clearly a disappointing season at six and seven now. Well, all your you know scenarios are right on point, but I still think that we have to play the kind of football. You have to play to win and, and, not, and, and play not to lose. And a lot of people don't understand that statement, but if you play, out, if you play to win, and, and, and playing not to lose is having a lead and then you Sit protect on. the ball and do all these things and you end up losing anyway. But when you go out there with aggression, like you said, I think the defense has, has stepped up. I mean, I even, early the quarter and a half I got to see, Sean Smith made some good plays. Yep, he's playing a lot better now. Yeah, so we can't, he can't be a whipping boy anymore because at one point he definitely was. I mean, mm -hmm. but the key thing that you said in your scenario a minute ago is when you talked about, <coughs> excuse me, Cordero Patterson. Now this, see, this is why in all my coaching, I do things so much different than a lot of, a lot of coaches do. But what I would have done after the way that they played the game before, I would have started Cordero Patterson. And what's the... He earned a start. Yeah, but what's the other... The, the, uh, Johnny... Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Holton. Listen, listen to what I'm saying now. Okay. Let me, you know, I, I, hey, it couldn't have been no worse than what it was. He's soft. No, you no, missed no, part no, no, of no. the game. Could, no, hey, let me tell you something. All I know is what was, what was the maximum amount of points the Raiders were down? Man, well, Holton. No, 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 answer my question. We were down 26 to nothing. Okay, right? So we scored 13 points. What, how much worse could he have been if they'd have started him and Patterson and brought those guys in because Crabtree had missed games, Cooper had been hurt, let them get into the It wouldn't have been 13 and nothing if he didn't fumble after Carr hitting but, with the pass. Okay, He's running across but, the middle. He holding the ball out here, man. Okay. You okay, got to protect that but, ball but, high and okay. tight, right? All right, but wait a minute. He don't have no ball okay, security. Okay, but, He's fumbled three games in a okay, row. Okay, but listen to this. You're not following my, my train of thought. Say he'd have made that catch in the first quarter. You know, even the touchdown he caught the week before, he dropped it. And, f and recovered it in the end. Uh-uh. <coughs> he ain't the being, one. But, He's good getting open, but, but he ain't the one. You're still missing my point. Did he, <laughs> did he catch I'm sorry. The, did he you struck a nerve when you said no, Johnny Holton. No, but did he catch the ball? 
uh, he caught the ball, got the touchdown, immediately dropped it. Oh, I'm, it could have been what overturned. I'm, I'm talking about in the in the Kansas City game. Did he, he catch the, the ball? He caught the ball, but then it's, it's all like, right. And then who another caught, ball bounced caught, right off his hands. Who caught the ball early? Carr threw a touchdown pass also in the game to hit him in the hands and just bounced off. Okay. So. But, but so he, ain't the he one. obviously, and see, I, like I said, you you you'll probably get this later on tonight. But my point is, he was catching balls, whether he dropped them or not. The balls were thrown to him, correct? Patterson would have been catching balls. So Patterson, I agree. Okay, go with the guys that got you there the game before, and then bring the other guys in and see if they're ready. Crabtree wasn't ready. I, I actually subscribe to half of what you said. I would have started Patterson and Crabtree. Yeah, you're well, right. Well, all I would have started saying, Patterson. Okay, and we got we, we only have two minutes to argue, but all I'm saying is mm-hmm. you're missing my point. Let those guys come in, especially Crabtree. You know why? Mm-hmm. Because he didn't play for his own stupidity. So make him pay for that and come off the bench. See Holden catch a ball, drop it, fumble it, whatever. At least he catching the damn ball. <laughs> he caught it and fumbled. I'll take that compared to somebody wide open and dropped the ball twice. Those I saw. Mm-hmm. And see, I'm old school. They say injuries should never take you out of your starting position. He didn't have an injury. He caused his team by getting suspended. Bring his butt off the bench, let him earn his time back. That's my train of thought. From a, uh, I know you don't coach. From a coaching perspective, there's ways that you get in a guy's head to make him come out and perform. Yeah. It was too easy. Oh, you're starting, you're okay. You didn't deserve all that, but you start. It made his head wasn't there. Yep. I, just for correction, I've only coached once, and I coached a seventh grade squad, and we went undefeated. That's the only time I ever coached. It was my son when he was playing uh, basketball over at Newark Memorial. Yeah. So I have had one well, coach. Well, it, it's a whole different mentality. So mm-hmm. you got one, and I got like fifty. Yeah. So I don't know Years. much about that, but <laughs> I feel like game. that in, when it comes to coaching, there's 32 teams in the NFL. There's 32 different coaches. There is no wrong or right. It's just basically a philosophy that you hold true to you and you know your tendencies and other tendencies. So I feel like it's a good, it's a good argument, but you well, know. Think about that scenario. Over the rest of the day, and you're going to understand what I'm saying. It's all about the mental capacity that you put on Crabtree. Well, Cooper got hurt. His is all totally different. Well, but all I'm we saying is. we and say they've all underachieved? How about I'm that? I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about what, what Crabtree put himself into. Mm-hmm. Let him feel that he's earning his spot back. He, you just gave it to him. At three hundred and sixty-seven thousand well, dollars a year, you're thinking wrong because it ain't a, a about game, money. It's about winning games. At three hundred and sixty-seven thousand a game, he gonna start no, no matter what. Well, that's, that's, that's just how well, they do that's it. That's why they lost. Yeah. And well, if they do it, I'm just telling you, that's my opinion. I think they lost because they you weren't mentally ready. You have to be ready. accountable, and he they are not making him accountable. That's you guys my can point. tell we are really angry about the Raider loss. Absolutely. <laughs> Take us but out you know of what? here. We're gonna have to get back to you next week, and hopefully, we won't be arguing at the end of the show. We'll be happy that we're, we're still arguing. in it. just having a discussion. Well, a heated discussion, <laughs> argument, again, it's a choice of words. But, yeah, we'll be back next week with a recap of the Dallas Cowboys and the Oakland Raiders at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum here on our TV.